شكرا لجميع متحدثينا الكرام استمعنا طوال هذا الصباح إلى بعض أبطالنا الرياديين المحليين وإذا كنا تعلمنا شيئا واحدا من جميع القصص التي تمت مشاركتها وستشارك على هذا المسرح اليوم في إطار مهرجان الشارقة لريادة الأعمال 2021 فهو أن ريادة الأعمال أو حتى مجرد فعل شيء جديد ومختلف ليس بالطريق السهل إذا كيف نواصل السعي وراء أهدافنا رغم الصعوبات ورغم العقبات والتحديات Thank you to our esteemed speakers. So far this morning, we've spoken mostly about our local entrepreneurial heroes. And if there's one thing that connects all the stories together, and even the stories that are going to be told and shared on this stage, is that entrepreneurship, or even the act of doing something different, is not an easy route to take. You'll probably be wondering, what is the connection between adventurers and entrepreneurship? Two words, resilience and grit. So how do we keep ourselves to keep pursuing our goals despite the difficulties, despite the hurdles, and despite the challenges? Hassan, this is something that can be the leaders on the stage to talk about it in the end. سأتركهم يروون قصتهم بكلماتهم الخاصة ولذا وبدون أي تأخير رحبوا معنا في مهرجان الشارقة لريادة الأعمال لعام 2021 بنجوم الفيلم الوثائقي الذي صدر مؤخرا ما وراء البحر الهائج المغامران المصريان عمر سمرة وعمر نور well, that's something that our next two guests can definitely talk about, and I'm very excited to have them on stage. I want to tell you their story, but I'll let them do that. Without any further ado, please welcome to the 2021 Charge Entrepreneurship Festival, the stars of the recently released documentary, Beyond the Raging Sea, Egyptian adventurers Umar Samra and Umar Noor. أيها السادة المسرح لكما My name is Omar Samra. I'm a mountain and cold adventurer. My name is Omar Noor. I'm a professional triathlete. down the stream merrily 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 life is but a dream but we didn't make it guys let me tell you something guys when you're doing something great when you're trying to do something huge I compare it to reaching out and you're on your tippy tippy toes trying to grab your dreams. And guess what happens when you're out there on your toes? This is when you can lose your balance. This is when you can fall. But this is also where opportunity lies. And things, when things work out, 
Sometimes you become the first ever Egyptian professional triathlete at age 31, when most people are retiring. After being, thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> After being 30 kilos overweight, you start to represent your country on the Olympic circuit. And sometimes you become the first Egyptian to summit Mount Everest after being diagnosed at age 11 with severe chest asthma. And then you move on to climb the highest mountain in every continent and ski to the North and the South Pole. <laughs> but sometimes <laughs> you end up a thousand kilometer from shore in the middle of the Atlantic with zero support. In 80 kilometer winds, 10 meter waves, 16 degrees Celsius cold waters. No communication with the outside world. Your emergency beacons that are supposed to fire when you need them the most, when you want to survive, they don't work. The life raft that you're supposed to get into to survive in case of an emergency doesn't inflate. And all this is happening in great white shark hunting territory. And I know what you're thinking, guys. I mean, when you, when you put yourself in these situations, right, when you start a business, whether it's business, whether it's an adventure that takes you to the far corners of the earth, whether it's competing at the highest level of sports, or whether it is the companies that we're currently running, there's a common theme. We reach out on our tippy toes, and sometimes great things happen, but sometimes you fall. You see, most people, they live in this middle band where things are safe and comfortable. You don't want to risk too much because you might lose what you already have. And maybe what you already have is exactly what you want, and that's cool. But what if what you have is not what you aspire to? What if you want something more? What if you want something different? You see, the beauty of life lies in the extremities, the highs and the lows, right? This is where growth happens. This is where learning and the magic happens. But guess what? That's also where uncertainty lives. That's where fear, loss, and all these things that scare us, these emotions that we want to run away as far as we can from, they all live in the same place. And when you take these kind of risks, you open up yourself to failure. And sometimes your failure is extremely public, and that's the worst feeling in the world. So what are we saying here? We're saying start. Just start. So let us share with you of the story of how we started. It happened exactly five years ago. I was sitting on a plane. I took the window seat. I love the window seat. Looking out the window, watching a movie. No problems. I stare at the ocean, and it's just this vast blue ocean below me. I finish the movie, vast blue ocean across the Atlantic. And this crazy idea just comes out of nowhere. How cool would it be if I could row across that ocean, human powered, not using a sail, not using a motor? How cool would that be? That nagging idea, days and weeks passed, and I just couldn't get that idea away. But I knew something. I knew something from previous experiences, that when I have these crazy ideas and I can't get them out of my head, there's only one way to do that, which is actually to go ahead and try and do it. But I had no maritime experience. I wasn't going to do this thing by myself. So I did some research, and I found the most successful expeditions across the Atlantic are four-man teams. So now I have to find three people with enough time, grit, hard work, dedication to do something like this. It, it was impossible. But what if I could find just one guy? Ta-da! I'm the one. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. These guys are such different personalities. How are these guys going to be on a 7 meter by 2 meter boat, crossing an ocean literally without one throwing the other overboard? And what was it going through my mind? What happens in five, ten weeks when this dude doesn't stop talking? <laughs> and look, guys, on the surface, absolutely. We are very different characters on the surface. But once you start to peel the layers and you get down to the core, our ethos is the same. What drives us is the same. So I guess we have synergy. Let's form a team and cross an ocean. No, not good enough. We have to test. We have to test this. How did we do it? Theory, practice. 
theory, theory was the what if game. We kept on asking over and over, what if, what if, what if you get sick? What if I get weak? What if we capsize? What happens? And look, no matter how much preparation you do, you will never ever be able to imagine every single what if. But that's not the point. The point is to learn how we make decisions as a team and to practice that over and over and over so that when it happens out there, guess what? Automatic. Everything just happens automatic. So this is theory. Practice. How did we practice? We had to train our bodies to be able to row two hours on, two hours off, day and night for up to 10 weeks to get to the other side of the ocean. But it wasn't just this. It was also our brains. We had to learn about navigation. We had to learn about the ocean. We had to learn about all the equipment that was around us. And guess what? We would throw ourselves in this situation to try to mimic the real thing. And what was the purpose of that? The purpose of that was to learn how we work as a team, to start to understand the things that we like and the things that we don't like. For example, it helps Omar to know that I respond really well to positive reinforcement. You're doing a great job, by the way. And there you go. And you know what? It fires me up. And it helps me to know that if Omar looks grumpy, throw food at him. Throw food at him because he is not grumpy, he's hangry, right? And you know, you, you think about this and you're like, oh, these are very silly examples. They're not. These examples, these very examples are the things that we used when we were about to lose our lives in order to save ourselves. So what are we ultimately trying to say? We're saying that you just have to start. And part of starting is forming that core team. You're going to hire other people, you're going to bring more people on board, but hiring that core team, starting with it, that's the most important part. Once you have that, you sign up, you commit, and then you figure it out, because if you have the right team in place, you can figure anything out, right? This is extremely key. It sounds much easier said than done, right? Most creators, most idea creators fail before they actually start. But why is that? Yes, it's hard, but why is that? The thing is, from the idea stage, all the way to doing the thing, and I'm not talking just about small ideas now, I'm talking about dreams, I'm talking about stretch goals, I'm talking th about things larger than life. The problem is that people commit that process 100% to the mind. You see, the mind can get you from the start of the idea all the way to the edge of the cliff, but it will never let you jump because the mind is built on logic. It's not logical to jump off the cliff. The mind wants to keep you safe. That's what it's designed to do and it's dangerous to take that thing. That's why they call it the leap of faith. Because to do that, to start something, you're gonna to have to depend on something other than the mind. People call it different things. Your intuition, your gut. I like to call it heart. Let me tell you, there is one thing that we didn't have for sure when we started this expedition when we wanted to take this tiny little boat and row across the Atlantic Ocean. Rowing experience. Both Omar and I, before we started, we had 30 minutes of rowing experience combined. In the gym, on a machine. But let me tell you what we had in spades. We had heart. We had a lot of heart. And sometimes, that's all that matters. there are actually more people that have gone to space than have rode across an ocean. So we decided to do it. He gets a phone call from Omar Summer who tells him, hey, I want to do this thing. I want to row across the Atlantic. We had you know, no experience. There was so much to learn. Two guys who really have no idea what rowing is about. He's done seven summits. He's went to both poles. I think this looked like a very reasonable next challenge to go. It was a challenge that we wanted to raise awareness about the plight of refugees. What we didn't know is how close our stories would become. It's actually a good naivety to not know what's coming. There isn't anything else that's like this. What happens if you get injured? What happens if I'm weak? What happens if I have this issue or that issue? What do we do? And then very quickly, just things started to compound. Waves get bigger, wind gets stronger. If something happens, it's finished. In 
you could feel that pressure build. It's seven, eight meter waves crashing. It is chaos. You know, what would I tell his, his family? I love him so much, baby. He's safe. It becomes just very clear that this is now just about us. No matter how much you think you understand, nothing will compare to the real thing. It's almost like my entire life led up to that one moment. I just found myself calling his name loud. Omar, where are you? Till this very day, it hurts remembering the feeling. Moms, right? That part at the end still gives me goosebumps until this day. You guys watched the first video, right? It was the very beginning. We put the team together, we ignored the naysayers, we took the leap of faith. Everything's great because everything's exciting in the beginning, right? You have energy, you're focused, you're full of ideas. The sky's the limit. And your story is new. Everyone wants to talk to you. They want to interview. Everybody wants to talk to you about how great your idea is. And when you go to the office, your inbox is empty. And you have all the time in the world to think about what success means to you, to take, to think about business philosophy and how you're going to take things forward. It's an exciting phase. You're inspired, and you're inspiring others. And then reality kicks in, right? It's not all roses and unicorns. It's not you in a boardroom pitching for investment, securing your Series A funding. No, that's not reality. Reality looks a little bit more like this. Yeah, that is 200 unread messages in your inbox. That, <laughs> that's exhaustion from all the problems and the complexities of your business. Things aren't clear anymore. That's the early mornings. That's the late nights. That's all the sacrifices that you've had to make. That's what that is. And you know, let me tell you something. It's hard to stay motivated. It's hard to stay motivated when, when the eyes of the world are no longer on you, when you're no longer the hot thing and it passes and you have to just grind it out. And you know what else? It's hard to lead when you cannot clearly see. If there's one photo that really captures the disparity, the huge contrast between reality and expectation, is Omar and I doing a sea survival training course in a swimming pool looking like a pair of two wet poodles. Expectation and reality. The, the differences between them can be huge. Even if you plan, even if you have expectations, even if you know exactly what you're getting into, the reality is always going to be a little bit harder, a little bit tougher, it's going to take a little bit longer. Let me give you some examples of how that panned out. Because I knew I was susceptible to seasickness, I knew that I was going to puke on the first day. But I had no idea that I was going to puke eight times on the first day, ending the day being completely depleted. We ended up surviving on protein shakes and weight gainer, and our first solid meal was on day seven. We knew we had to row 12 hours a day each, so we knew our bums were going to get sore. And we knew that it was going to be wet and salty, but the magnitude of it, the bum sores were terrible. Sitting on the seat for one minute after that just became excruciating. We underestimated the sheer size of the waves in the open ocean, hitting you, drenching you consistently. It felt like we were living inside a wet sock. Because there were so many variables happening and so many unexpected things, we didn't take just double shifts, we took triple shifts. And we were sleeping 40 minutes intermittent every four hours. So sleep deprivation kicked in really from the get-go. The sun was not charging our batteries fast enough. We had no idea that we could potentially end up losing our navigation. And because the power wasn't there, we lost also one of our key components, which is the desalinator that changes the salt water into fresh water so we can drink. So instead of making 20 liters a day, we were making now three. So we had to cut down on everything. And just when we thought we had that figured out, the backup broke. The thing is, if you persevere, 
if you accept the pain, the struggle, and everything like that, you realize in the end, there is something beautiful waiting for you on the other side. There's sunshine. That is something that's really important. But what are you getting yourself into at the end of the day? You have to set your expectations right from day one. There's two things. You set your expectations right from day one. You don't go into the thing thinking it's going to be a joyride. You have to understand that going into it is going to be tough and hard. And so when it happens, you're not blindsided. And then the second thing, you have to understand that you've got to learn to be comfortable with the discomfort. You almost have to find joy in it. You have to associate it with a positive feeling. Because you know that when you hit that wall, you know that something beautiful is going to come out of it at the end of the day. You see, we hear it all the time in the entrepreneurship circuit, that we're both entrepreneurs. Nine out of ten businesses fail. But why do they fail? Yes, because it's hard. But let me venture to tell you something else. It's because when things get hard, people still think they're in decision-making mode. So something bad happens, and all of a sudden, oh, this bad thing happens, so maybe my idea doesn't work, maybe I need to do something, maybe I need to give up. I don't think so, because when we were in the ocean, when we were on that boat, what happened was, things did go bad. They turned pear-shaped, and they were very hard, very quickly. But we didn't turn to start rethinking why we took on this journey to begin with. We knew that we were not in decision-making mode. We were in execution mode. This is what we signed up for. Even if it was harder than we thought, this is what we trained for. This is what we set out to do. Guys, if you think you're going to embark on a journey like this or on an entrepreneurial journey just with some minor obstacle along the way, you're wrong, right? Sooner or later, something out of nowhere is going to blindside you. Something out of nowhere. And us, when we are out on that boat, just when things became bearable, the dehydration, the exhaustion, the lack of sleep, all of these things start to become, you know what? We might make it after all. Out of nowhere, bam! Two waves out of nowhere come and hit our boat and we capsize. All of a sudden, all of these things, all these discomforts are replaced. What are they replaced with? Us with our boat upside down, treading water, literally, for life. You see, guys, in the ocean, in business, in personal relationships, the one thing you can count on that something will eventually go wrong. And that something will be of catastrophic proportions. So it's not about whether it's going to happen or when it's going to happen. It's about what you're going to do when it does happen. Are you going to freeze and go into non-action and just wait for things to compound? Are you going to panic and make illogical, erratic decisions that are going to cost you more? Or are you going to just accept the status quo and just pray for a miracle to happen? Are you going to give up and slowly sink into the abyss? Are you going to let everything that you've worked for until that point just go to waste? No. No, you're not. You're going to keep on moving forward. You're going to keep on inching forward. And listen, guys, when there is something, a, a huge problem at work, in life, or in this situation, you cannot see the solution. And sometimes when you don't see the solution, you don't know which way is up, which way is down, which way is forward. How, Omar, do you want me to make decisions when I don't know which way I'm going? This is life. One certain death was us hanging on. We knew that. We knew. So while we were on that boat out there, floating, hanging on for dear life, we kept on saying over and over, we don't know a solution, but what can we do to make our situation a little bit better? What can we do to make our situation a little bit better? And then when we get there, we don't rest on our laurels. We ask, what can we do to make our situation a little bit better? And we keep on doing this over and over and over. And hopefully, with persistence and a nice little dusting of luck, a permanent solution can manifest itself. So guys, at the end of the day, during the last few minutes over the course of the presentation, what we're trying to say is not tell you ingredients for success. What we're trying to say is ingredients to create the right environment for success to happen. Right? We talked about taking a leap of faith, where the heart trumps the mind. The starting phase, where you have to create a team and be focused, commit, and then 
try and do anything. Here, the mind is important, but you're never going to get started unless you prioritize the heart. Then you actually start the thing, and now you're in it. Now the challenges are come. Now it's about accepting the struggle. Now it's about the long nights. It's about the hard work. It's about the problem solving. It's for the mind and the body. They're important here. So you've got the heart, you've got the mind, and you've got the body all working together. But there's one more thing. And in our mind, it's the most important thing of all. The soul of the thing. The why. Because in anything you do in life, it has to mean something. It has to mean something to you, to your family, to society. And once you find that thing, it's all about trying to inch it forward just a little bit every single day. You see, we didn't go through all of that, get to the precipice of death, stare death in the eye and, and get saved just to walk away from that experience, living our lives normally as if nothing happened. We knew that we were privileged. We knew that what happened to us is akin to a skydiver opening two parachutes and not making them. But we knew that we are in a privileged position, that we have a responsibility. We have the privilege of standing in front of you here today to share our story, hoping that it might inspire someone, make you think a little bit differently. But also, we had this sense of responsibility because when we set out to this journey, if you look at the boat, it says rowing for refugees. That was the cause that we were standing for. We wanted to use our experience to raise awareness about the plight of refugees. Hundreds and thousands of refugees every single week, they try to cross dangerous bodies of water hoping for a better life and they don't make it. So what we were trying to do was to try and attach our cause to that. We didn't know that we were going to have 13 hours struggling between life and death. But now that we did it, you can say, well, well these guys didn't cross the ocean. And that was what success meant to us in the beginning. But ultimately, we find ourselves in an opportunity to do something greater than ourselves. And suddenly we find ourselves with the opportunity to have a platform that can be something more, something meaningful. And on that note, we teamed up with the director, Marco Ursini, Omar and I, and we created that documentary that you guys saw the trailer of, Beyond the Raging Sea, to document sort of our experiences and the things that we've learned, but also to say what, to do what Omar just said, right? To shed light on the plight of refugee and to hopefully make a little bit more of an everlasting impression on the whole thing. And we are not stopping there, right? We realize this is the first time we make a film. Right? And, and, and we're pretty excited about it because it did the whole um, tour of all the festivals. It ended up being in Cannes Film Festival uh, as a work in progress. And actually last month, it is the first ever documentary to be widely released in cinemas across the Middle East. So we were like super excited about that stuff, right? However, we're not going to stop there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. However, we realized, guys, this is 72 minutes. You can't cram 72 minutes of everything that we learned out there uh, into a 72-minute movie. It's just not going to happen, right? So right now we're working on a podcast, Beyond the Regency podcast, so we can hopefully tell more of the stories that people want to hear about what exactly happened. And it's not going to stop. We're going to continue, right? But what's the point? The point is, whatever it is that you're doing, a podcast, a movie, you're rowing across the ocean, you're starting a new business. No matter what you do, you have to bring your all into everything that you do. Everything. Your heart, your mind, your body, and your soul. And the challenge of bringing all of you into everything that you do is that it's overwhelming. You carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. Sometimes it can be crippling. But the key here is to understand that you don't necessarily have control over everything and maybe some burdens are not yours to carry. Actually, 99% of everything that you encounter will be completely out of your control. We're just specks in the universe. And I know what you're thinking. These guys are supposed to be motivational speakers. Like, what's the matter with them? They're telling us 99% is out of our control. But look at it differently. Imagine if you let go of 99% of the problems, the issues, that you know you have no control over. And you used all of that energy into that 1%, that 1% that you have full control over. 
So what is that 1%? Can 1% really matter? The 1% is all that matters and it's the secret to unlocking unlimited potential. The 1% is what you do, what you say, and how you react to every given situation. And the beauty of life is to be able to wake up every single morning and just focus on only one thing, just doing your best. And some days you'll be ahead, some days you'll be behind. But if you're able to do that consistently and you're ahead more days than you're behind, then in our minds, you've already succeeded. Because life at the end of the day is in the pursuit of things. Whatever the books and the gurus say, life is not about success. Life is not about failure. Life is about waking up every single day and doing your absolute best. Life is about bringing your all with passion. Bringing all of you in everything that you do. Heart, mind, body, and soul. Thank you very much. Some people say that it's hard work to row an ocean. I think it's really relaxing <laughs> when, when you have Spider-Man as your team. <laughs> it's awesome. Thank you, guys. That's our <laughs> story.